13 nights of Halloween, 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 13 nights of Halloween, mainly movies. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of the 2021 edition of my 13 Nights of Halloween series, today I'm going to be talking about the 1982 sci-fi horror sequel, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, stars Tom Atkins, Stacey Nelkin, and Dan O'Hurley, and was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. After a novelty salesman is killed a week before Halloween, his daughter and a doctor team up and race to solve the mystery of his death before Halloween night. Halloween 3 is most definitely the outlier of this franchise. It's the only film in the series that doesn't feature Michael Myers, which is one of its biggest claims to infamy. But it's different in so many other ways, too. This is the only Halloween movie that isn't really a slasher film. It doesn't focus on teenage characters. It has nothing to do with Haddonfield. There aren't any returning characters or story connections to the other Halloween films. This is the film that's least similar to any other movie in the franchise, and it's one of the most divisive in the series as a result. In hindsight, the decision to not make this another Michael Myers movie seems more than a little absurd. When you think of the Halloween franchise, he's what immediately comes to mind. He's the embodiment of this series. And so, after two other Michael Myers-led slashers, audiences expected some more of the shape in Halloween 3. I know I sure did. The first time I saw this movie, I had no idea that this was the outlier that it is. And so I spent the first two-thirds of the movie wondering when Michael was going to show up and how the hell he was going to fit into the story. So expectations made this a difficult film. But I will say that the concept behind it sort of makes sense, and I can see why they tried it. Halloween 2 felt like a conclusion to the Laurie and Michael story arc. So they came up with the idea of making an annual Halloween anthology film series, with each movie being its own self-contained story. Honestly, it still sounds like it could have been a good idea. The mistake was naming it Halloween 3. As initially intended, this movie is its own standalone thing. Other than some crossover crew members and a few fun meta-references that I won't spoil, it has absolutely nothing to do with its two predecessors. And I gotta say, this movie is a very strange mix. Part mystery, part paranoid thriller, part sci-fi, part horror. The whole story is just incredibly bizarre. It starts off reasonably, but then begins to devolve into one baffling WTF moment after the next. In a strange way, there's something extremely interesting about it all that manages to keep you invested. Once you accept the bizarreness and that the story can go in any possible direction, it becomes fun and some pieces of the story are genuinely tense. But on the other hand, it feels a little too random at times, even after you've accepted it. Most of the big twists and plot revelations are foreshadowed, but there is a certain exasperation that comes from it too. Just like the story, the characters here are an equally weird mix. The first two films had focused on Laurie Strode, and most other movies in this franchise heavily feature teenage characters, but our main protagonist here is a middle-aged man. Tom Atkins plays the questionably licensed Dr. Chalice, and he's a very bizarre character. He's supposed to be charming, and I guess in a way he is likable overall, but he's such a skeezy jerk at times that it almost takes you out of it. It's like he goes out of his way to be a horrible person, but then gets so invested in his helpful mission, and it's just a weird combination. Ellie is an equally strange character, though there may actually be a reason for that once you've seen the film, and our villain is villainous. The whole story is just so bizarre, so he takes on a cartoonish quality, but O'Hurley plays it well. The acting is mostly competent across the board, though it does occasionally have that awkwardness that many 80s and 90s Stephen King movies had. Fittingly, director Tommy Lee Wallace went on to direct the It miniseries in 1990. 
The Halloween franchise has never been particularly scary to me, even during its most traditionally horror moments. And I don't think Halloween 3 is scary either. There are certainly some very tense moments during a few chase sequences, but the horror moments of this film are combined with such strange sci-fi elements that they end up being less scary than they are bizarre or intriguing. There are some interesting kills in this movie, but unlike in Halloween 2, most of them are implied rather than actually shown, so there's really not that much gore. The few times things are actually shown, the makeup and effects are pretty bizarre and unexpected, so they shock more than they gross out. Similar to Halloween 2, however, is this film's reliance on jump scares. In fact, this one includes even more. There are probably two dozen times where a character will turn around and find somebody right behind them, which is, of course, accompanied by a loud synthy laser sound, one that actually sounds remarkably similar to the sound effect used in Christine the following year. Speaking of Christine, that score sounds very reminiscent of what we get here. John Carpenter, unsurprisingly, composed both of them, and I think they're both good and kind of underrated. Halloween 3's theme certainly doesn't match that of the first Halloween film, but it's still very good, and I think the score is actually incredibly fitting for this film. Like the first movie, it's effectively used to heighten the tension. As I mentioned before, there are a few too many score-based jump scares here, but the score works perfectly in other moments like the chase sequences. Of course, we can't talk about Halloween 3 music without mentioning Silver Shamrock. Irritating, incessant, but oh so catchy. It's just London Bridge is falling down, but that jingle and really those commercials are iconic and among the most memorable aspects of this film. Halloween 3 is such a strange movie. Strange on its own, but perhaps even stranger when you realize that it's part of the Halloween franchise. The absence of Michael Myers definitely impacts this film. I'll admit that I was very underwhelmed by this movie the first time I saw it, partly because there was no Michael Myers, but mostly because I was so unprepared. My expectations were vastly different from the reality of this film, and so I was just very let down by it. But it wouldn't leave my mind. Even without rewatching it, the more I thought about it, not to mention the more other Halloween sequels I watched, the more I liked it. And I found on rewatch that that trend of growing appreciation for it held true. This is definitely one of those movies where mental preparation and knowing what to expect is key. You don't need to know any specifics, but knowing that it doesn't have Michael Myers and that it's a wild and strange movie will make it much easier to accept and enjoy this as the truly bizarre film that it is. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the bizarre story. So this definitely won't be a pro for everybody, and it's not even entirely a pro for me, but there's something so interesting and fun about how weird this movie is. I don't even want to hint at any specifics here, because I really think part of the fun of this movie is encountering all of these sudden plot points that make you sit there and go, wait, what? <laughs> it's just such a wild mashup of things that feels like it makes no sense at all, even though it sorta of does and ends up feeling like a cohesive movie by the end. It's got an extremely different story from any of the other Halloween films, but one that'll certainly keep you guessing. The second pro is the score. So it doesn't come close to touching the score from the original film, but that's okay. Because again, this is a very different kind of movie. The original Halloween theme was made using a synthesizer, but it emulated traditional instruments like a piano. This score was also composed by John Carpenter and also made on a synthesizer, but leans much more heavily into an electronic sound. But with the sci-fi elements of this film, it really works and fits the tone of everything. It enhances the tension of a lot of scenes, and I was really struck by how effective it was. I don't think I noticed it as much the first time I saw the film, because I was so baffled by everything else that was going on, but the score really shines through on rewatch, and was an obvious influence on the score for Christine the following year. On the con side, the biggest issue is that this movie feels a little too random at times, and this mostly comes from the bizarre story. 
See, I told you it wasn't entirely a pro for me. There are some really strange things that happen in this movie, and although some of them positively contribute to enjoying this film, others just leave you confused. This movie mixes a lot of different genres, but doesn't present them all from the start. So when some of the more supernatural and sci-fi elements first come into play around halfway through this movie, it's jarring and feels super random, to the point of distraction, and almost takes you out of the movie. The second con is Dr. Chalice. Like I mentioned before, I'm a little mixed on him, but for the vast majority of the movie, every time I watch it, I can't stand this character. He's just so unlikable to me. He's such a jerk, he's so skeezy, he's a terrible father, I don't understand how he possibly has a valid license to practice medicine. I think Tom Atkins' performance is mostly fine, so I don't really have an issue with that. It's just the character. And it's tough, because he's our primary protagonist, so we're stuck with him a lot. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Halloween 3 Season of the Witch or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Halloween 3 Season of the Witch 3 out of 5 paws. It's a bizarre movie that has nothing to do with any other Halloween film, but it's fun and it's got this weird charm to it. I really disliked it the first time I saw it, but it's grown on me quite a bit over the years, and it wouldn't surprise me if this eventually makes it up to three and a half paws for me. I would recommend Halloween 3 Season of the Witch to anybody looking for an unusual sci-fi horror film. This is definitely more of an acquired taste and not really a movie that I would say is great, but it's certainly an interesting watch. If you're a big fan of Halloween or the Halloween franchise, just be aware that this movie does not feature Michael Myers. So if you're going into it expecting a typical Halloween movie, you're gonna be really disappointed. If you liked Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, I would recommend Christine. For the most part, it's a very different type of story, focusing on a murderous car, but it does have a similar feel, especially when compared to the beginning of this film. It also features a similar sounding score, and was actually directed by John Carpenter, who didn't direct this third film, but did, of course, direct the first Halloween. If you want another paranoid horror film, you might want to watch Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's got some sci-fi elements that sort of influence certain things here, and was also originally supposed to end ambiguously. And if you're in an Italian giallo kind of mood, you should check out Don't Torture a Duckling, which also features an investigatory duo and a town that's very wary of outsiders. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Halloween 3, Season of the Witch? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite sequel that went in an entirely different direction than the rest of its franchise? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.